There's something I missed when I did my mod list video back in 2022. Those of you who've been following Grifters probably caught the episode where I realized this and started to make some updates. The general consensus among modders, at least as far as I've been able to tell, is that you really shouldn't add or take out mods in the middle of a playthrough. My own experience somewhat backs this up. I'm a bit more cavalier than most when it comes to adding mods, unless they tell you that it can only be added on a new save, but I try to avoid taking out mods, especially ones with a lot of scripts. Textures and meshes, however, they're fair game as far as I'm concerned. As is my usual stance with these things, anything I suggest in this video is merely that. A suggestion. Use this as inspiration for your own modding adventures. Or don't. If you don't like what I've done with the place, that's fine. There are many more mod lists, catalogs, and collections out there, and you don't need me to tell you what you can or can't use in your own game. With that long introduction, let me take you through some updates and changes to the Grifters mod list. Most, if not all, of the changes to this mod list started with a need to fix a mod conflict in the Rift which I definitely should have seen coming. I didn't realize it was a problem until I ran Antlog and Company down to Riften in episode 10 and got to witness the grass and sound struggling to load. In finally solving that problem, I got distracted and overhauled most of my game. You know, as you do. Originally, I had Skyrim Flora overhaul, Vivid Landscapes, Origin of the Forest, and Folkvanger all trying to edit the same things with their overrides all tangled up. I've since done away with three of those mods in favor of ones that play nicer together. Only Origins of Forest Remains. I've changed out SFO2 Summer Edition for Happy Little Trees. Since the in-game season is currently late spring and I started Grifters before I learned that Seasons of Skyrim exists, I've also added in green and lush aspen trees for hopefully obvious reasons. I'm still using the Reach Tree Replacer as well because it looks appropriately green. Instead of Folkvanger, which I love, but not for this season, I'm using Tamrielic Grasses along with its companion landscape mod, Tamrielic Textures, in the Green Rift and Green Tundra variants. Which is exactly what I was trying to get out of my prior cluster f of trees and grasses. I've also taken out Vivid Landscape Snow completely because Tamrielic Textures has its own snow, which looks particularly cool, heh, <laughs> in combination with Icy Mesh Remaster and Realistic Ice and Snow, minus the snow, with the Dark Textures patch. Tamrielic Textures also has its own very nice mountains and rocks, greatly enhanced by Enhanced Rocks and Mountains, which is now a must-have in my own list, but your mileage may vary. ERM also includes double-sided meshes for the tallest mountains, which means that sunlight won't go through them. Badlands is still my go-to East March texture overhaul, though I am admittedly very biased on this. I've recently updated Badlands with far better normal maps, proper BC7 compression, and new texture and resolution options. I've also figured out how faux mod installers work, so the process of picking out which options you want for your game is now so much easier than it was before. Northern Shores is still part of this load order. However, I've changed out Cathedral Waters for Realistic Waters 2 and Better Water for RW2, along with my own custom-built watercolor patch which I slapped together in an attempt to fix my Lod Water Blues. With mixed success. It seems to work best with Reflect Sky turned on in Beth I and I. I can stand some minor camera wonk in favor of nice water. And speaking of nice water, I couldn't not add in Clofast 1's Natural Waterfalls when I saw it. With the updated trees, old shrubs started to stand out to me. I'm now using Shrubs Redone All-in-One and Happy Little Shrubs, which matches the pine and aspen shrubs to their respective trees. Mari's Flora also contains a few shrub textures, but they're being overwritten by both of these. Since my mountain flowers were glowing in the shade, I also installed Fixed Mesh Lighting by Katniss, and since I greatly disliked the yellow shrub no matter what I did with it, I installed Yellow Shrub Remover, which does exactly what it says on the tin. The last couple of landscape texture mods I've installed are Simplicity of Snow, along with its associated patch for Capital Windhelm expansion, Shaders of Soul Slime, and Improved Vanilla Sun. For absolutely no reason at all, I definitely didn't break the sun, I don't know what you're talking about. 
Finally, I actually ran SSE Lod Gen and Dindo Lod properly. I'm still using Dindo Lod too because that's what I have on hand, so a Nolvis guide page about that process will be linked in the description, even though I'm very aware that Dindo Lod 3 exists. I started this series with Dindo Lod 2, so Dindo Lod 2 will continue to be what I use. This setup doesn't use an ENB and probably never will, but a few things have changed in regards to weather and lighting, or more accurately, the sky and lighting. The most glaring, pun fully intended, change is the addition of Enhanced Volumetric Lighting and Shadows, or EVLAS. I've done a bit of customizing in the configuration file for the night lighting behavior to account for the fact that the moons now have accurate phases and paths thanks to Moon and Star's sky overhaul. The between times of Tamriel also have more accurate transition hues thanks to Twilight, and shadows at all times of day have been boosted and smoothed by Shadow Boost and Soft Shadows, all by the absolute mad lad Doodlum, who is also responsible for several other mods in this category by way of community shaders, which is super modular, highly configurable, performance friendly, and gets installed just like any other mod, which makes it very, very easy to work with. Community Shaders doesn't really do anything on its own, but that's why I also have installed Grass Lighting, Grass Collision, Grass Sampler Fix, Screen Space Shadows, Water Bending, uh, Water Blending, and the Light Limit Fix, which has the added benefit of actually improving my performance. Looking forward to more pure sorcery from the dude. Finally, one of the biggest mods I've ever attempted to slap into an in-progress story, Lux and Lux Orbis. Yes, I've finally done it. Why? Specifically because it has the most patches for window lights and shadows, which I adored from relighting Skyrim, but wanted more consistency across the board. I also wanted the Skyforge to not blind me so much whenever I looked at it. It seemed intimidating at first, but faux mod installers make everyone's lives easier. GG unit. Well played and thanks. Now, city textures are something I almost completely neglected to cover in my last modless video, either because I forgot to go looking for them, thought I had them covered by something else, or wanted to save my voice. I don't know which, but I've since installed many, 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 many texture mods for cities, forests, dungeons, and other miscellany. Most of these are from two mods, Skyland and Noble Skyrim. I previously had in the Osmodius texture packs, which didn't actually cover as much as I thought they did. Thus the overhaul. Solitude has gotten a facelift with Noble's Solitude, with one texture replaced by one from Skyland. The Blue Palace has also gotten a downgrade, actually, because I was getting 22 FPS with JKs. It's been knocked back to vanilla, but with a centered throne and Lux's lights. Along the same vein, Imperial Forts are using a combination of Osmodius, which is covering the exteriors of all Imperial Forts, since those get washed off and scoured smooth by rain and wind, while the interiors are all Skyland. Riften is a mashup of MRF's Riften and a touch of Skyland's Riften, with one single brick texture from Osmodius, which I'm completely in love with. I'm also using Parallax Riften Garden Walls, notably without the Parallax, while the Ratway and Cistern are using Noble's Ratway textures. Another couple of mods I didn't mention in my last mod list video, largely for spoiler reasons, are JK's Ragged Flagon and GG's Thieves Guild Headquarters. I did mention these in my last mod list video, but I'll mention them again here just to cover all my bases. Windhelm, Markarth, and all Dwemer Ruins are using their respective Nobles textures, as well as Dwemer Pipework reworked. The College of Winterhold got a rather spectacular facelift with Skirk Bros Retexture Project, SRP, Winterhold. I also pulled out a couple of Noble's Winterhold textures specifically for the main floor tiles, so that they match the rest of the stone a bit better. The City of Whiterun got the full Skyland treatment, though I'm using the 1k textures specifically because Whiterun is one of the places in my game where frame rate is a bit of an issue due to all the moving parts. 1k works just fine though. In fact, this white run is the thing that made me think that the next time I put together a mod list for a story, I'm going to use Skyland all in one as a base and build up from there. All of the forts and castles from the Dawnguard DLC have also been given the Skyland treatment, 
including the Shadry of Oriel and the grim husk that is the Soul Cairn. Speaking of grim husks, across the pond we have Rally's Soul Stime covering Raven Rock, Telmithrin, and everywhere in between. Orc strongholds have been given a massive blow up thanks to JJ Rum's Strongholds mod and Spice of Life. All of the rest of the stockade wood has been polished up with 4K stockade by I Want a Tardis in the not 4K flavor. Finally, at least for the forts, we have High Hrothgar's update in the form of the Halls of the Greybeards, dark version, and Skyhaven Temple covered by Clever Charf's Skyhaven HD. While not a texture mod per se, fans of the Skyrim Buddy Cops might have noticed that the tiny town of Stonehills just became Cactus's new favorite place to rest, thanks to Schlitzor's Stonehills mod. Other minor towns and villages have also been Skylandified, with the addition of textures that have gone unchanged from the last video, including Clever Charf's Farmhouse Floor, True Farmhouse Wood 1K, Peltapalooza, and Rugnarok. Dungeon clutter and the overall look of Nordic Barrows have been significantly cleaned up by covering all of it with Rudy HQ, Nordic Ruins, and subbing in Northfire's Dungeon and Cave Grounds. I've also added in a great many smaller mods to cover various miscellany, like Estes Farmhouse Vents, Slightly Better Rock Cairns, and Mathy's Realistic Road Signs, among other things. Lastly, all of the statue textures have been upgraded with iconic statues, because, I mean, have you seen that Shrine of Azura? The one exception to this, of course, is Mandragora Sprout's Shrine of Periite. Welcome to the lightning round for clothes and armors. I'm using Amidian Born as a base layer, so to speak, to cover whatever armors the other mods don't yet, and Rustic Clothing to do the same for regular clothing. Most of the vanilla armors, and a couple ones from immersive armors, have been overhauled by several fantastic retextures by Zav Bio, which are... just glorious. And I hope there will be an all-in-one version of these mods in the future, though I keep adding in relevant ones as they come out. And finally, hair. I've switched over to salt and wind for vanilla hair, and adjusted hair colors with mild hair colors. I think... that's everything. It may not be everything, but I've done my best to cover at least the most obvious additions to the list, like the big cities, and trees, and dungeons, and whatnot. I didn't cover animations in this one because my animations folder is just... a mess. Especially because I overhauled all of these before OR, Open Animation Replacer, came out. For now, just assume that most of the combat animations are either vanilla or something by Vero Levy until I get around to making that video. Once again, I'd like to reiterate that this is more of a catalog than a guide. A video that I can point people at when I get asked what's making Winterhold or Riften look like that, or what trees I'm using. These aren't the only textures, or even probably the best ones, for your lighting and weather setup. I also tend to vary textures based on just pure vibes. And these are the vibes I wanted to go for. You do you. As such, I won't be making a collection or an all-in-one install of all this, especially since I have better things to do with my time, like updating my other mod that isn't a patch collection. Anyway, have fun, try not to break your game, shout out to the patrons, and to those of you who are following the adventures of the Grifters crew, I'll see you on Wednesday. Probably. If my voice sounds a bit raw in this one, it's because I've been in close proximity to a cat that I'm very much allergic to and my lungs are rebelling. If I don't have a video next week, you'll know this one screwed up my lungs even more. Worth it.